I'm back, you guys. I was just on vacation. I never went anywhere. I just took some time off. But I'm here with another Watch Me Work, per usual. Now, this set, I know it looks simple, but it is special in the fact that it is a hybrid set. And what I mean by that, no, it's not poly gel. It's acrylic and separately also builder gel. So it's not just one product. It's not a hybrid product. It's acrylic, Valentino acrylic, and light elegance builder gel. So let me show you her previous set. We got to see where we came from to know where we're going. That's when it was freshly done. Beautiful set. I don't have a video. I'm sorry. We'll move on. <laughs> And this is that same set. I believe this is four weeks old, if I'm not mistaken. I actually recorded a few of the videos that I'm going to be coming out with about a month ago or something about around there. I'm going to be starting off by taking her colored acrylic all the way down. I want to do a complete removal because we're going to be building the nail back up with the ombre we're going to be doing. Basically meaning we're not just doing a gel polish on top of our enhancement. Our enhancement is going to be made of the ombre. Um, so we want to make sure we take off everything so we don't have a bulky nail when we put everything on top. Now you can get away with leaving some acrylic sometimes, but it depends on the new design you're doing. If it's going to be darker, if it's going to be sheer or opaque. Um, for example, this has purple and blue towards the cuticle area. I don't want there to be a chance of seeing purple or blue underneath her nude and it look bruised or discolored. So I 100% want to take that all the way down. But just in general, we don't want it to be bulky. So I'm removing everything. This bit, the red bearing bit from Atwood Industries is very aggressive and so fast. I know this is sped up, but even if I left it in real time, honestly, you'd be amazed at how fast this really works. Please use this bit at a very high speed. I believe Atwood recommends 25,000 RPMs or more. You don't want to use it too slow. It's like riding a bicycle too slow. It's wobbly. It's inefficient. You need some speed to get things going. Once you get it at the right speed, it's like butter. It may seem scary, but trust me, you need to use this at a high speed. Now, because this bit is so aggressive, it kind of there is a tiny bit of lifting at the cuticle area, but the teeth they'll catch on to that lifting and make it look more pronounced and kick it up even more. So just keep that in mind. It does happen. But um it's a awesome bit and it's very efficient and fast. Please be cautious when using it with builder gel because it is much softer. So you could take that builder gel down like in a snap. Um, so after I took it all the way down, I'm using the skiver bit. You always want to use this bit flush to the natural nail. You don't want that point to dig in and cause any rings. When I mean flush, you want that bit as parallel to the natural nail as possible, not coming in at an angle. So I'm using that to remove all that dead cuticle from the nail plate. Then I'm using the round bit just to clean up that dead skin and anything I lifted up. Now I use this round bit forward and backwards um, from left to right, right to left, just to get all directions to get that skin kicked up. I please refrain from using this bit on the natural nail much because it can cause a ring. So I mainly just use it around the um, actual epinicium or the live skin. That little piece of skin wouldn't come off. So I just clipped it, which is perfectly fine. Um, so I'm going in with a glamorous nude from Valentino. And I'm using Tammy Taylor's Extra Adhesion Monomer. And I'm using Poochie's Nails Size 16 Kalinsky Brush. This brunch brush is pinched. And I've been having this brush for years by now. Um, around the time that I first started doing nails, actually. And it's real good to me. So I'm going in and I'm making sure that the um, acrylic is opaque towards the cuticle area and then it fades down like I'm doing an ombre except there's nothing on the tip so in most of these you can see I'm only adding about two beads one closest to the cuticle area as you can see now and then another one near the free edge area I want to make sure I cover up the free edge I get it a little opaque because I don't want to see where the tip the tip meets the nail and I don't want to see her natural nail showing through so my goal is to make sure I cover that up. As you can see, I did with that bead and I'm just going to make sure it's opaque and then swipe it down. 
and I follow this for each nail. Some nails I apply the cuticle bead first, some nails I apply the uh, free, more like free edge or middle bead as you can see first. I just, I just flip flop. And as long as it looks the same, the goal is the same, I'm fine. And you may notice that my client's missing her sidewalls, a little bit of her sidewalls. Her actual um, sidewalls and her natural nail, they don't grow down as far. She's been having the same issue for years, no matter what I use, what technique, what, sh what tips, what shape, nothing. Her sidewalls just don't grow down that far and I believe it causes a weakness near the sides of her nails um especially when they're growing out so i it's been happening for years but actually in this very service i explained it to her um just so she understood and you know that's what it's all about you know everybody's different their anatomy's different and they may have a crooked finger they may have a twisted nail bed an injured nail bed you just explain to them how you're going to um, customize their service to make it work for them and what's going on. So just keep them in your know. Keep, keep your clients in the know. So next you can see I'm shaping the um, free edge portion. One, I didn't do this before I applied the acrylic because the nails were very brittle because I filed them so thin. I didn't want them to snap while I shaped them. But I'm also doing this because mainly because I don't want to file off my ombre that I'm doing. So the closest I can get it to shape now, it'll prevent me from filing off any of that ombre from the side. And if you're a nail tech or you've been doing nails for a while, you probably know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so next, I'm going in with the light elegance tack. Now, this is a very important step when you're doing hybrid acrylic with builder gel sets. This allows the builder gel to adhere to the acrylic flawlessly with no issues, anything. I apply this over the nail and cure it for the recommended time. And then I'm ready to go in with the gel. Now I'm using a few different brushes cause I'm using a few different products. I'm using the alpha brush. I have a size six and a size four. I can tell you I prefer the size six just because of the size. That's the size six, it's old, dingy, been used. And this I believe is master's touch brush and it's either from Hobby Lobby or Michaels. And I believe it's a size six as well. And I'm going to be using Light Elegance's Tennis Anyone in Electric Lime. That's their glitter gel for this process. And I just want to use different brushes because I'm using this color, glitter, and then encapsulating in clear. So I'm just applying the bulk of this color towards the free edge. And I'm wiping off my brush to make it more dry just so I can blend and feather this color up. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. This is just going to be a base for our glitter because our glitter is a little bit, it's transparent. It has that green tint to it, of course, but it is transparent. So I wanna make sure I have um, this color underneath to make it stand out. I could have done this without this step, but this just helps brighten it up and adds um, this kind of neon tone to it as well. So um, I'm just, as you can see, I'm starting off with more product towards the free edge. And as I'm moving up the nail, the brush is getting a little bit drier. And I'm not showing, but in some parts I am wiping the brush off just to make sure it's not too wet. And I'm just getting a little bit of color as I'm going up and just feathering it out. Now I'm gonna bring the glitter up higher than I brought that color just to make sure it's flawless. So you can see that color, it looks much more grassy green in the pot. And I want it to be, have, be more neon, so that's why I put that color. And you can see, as I feather it out, it becomes more and more sheer. It's a pretty sheer color. It just has that green tint to it. It's sort of like a, um, like a jelly color or a glass color. It's a sheer tint. So that's how I can see that, that neon through it. Now we're doing the same process. We're applying the bulk of the product towards the tip and feathering it out with the brush a little bit drier. And we're getting a beautiful ombre. Now we wanna make sure we feather that glitter out further up the nail towards the cuticle area. Then we applied that tennis anyone color just to make sure that that ombre is flawless. So you can see I'm bringing it up higher than I brought the actual color. Just because the glitter is so sheer, it's going to help blend that nude in to that lime or neon yellow green color that we had, that tennis ball color that we had. 
So I'm just going in and moving the glitters where I need them to be and making sure it's as opaque as I want it to be. And again, you'll see I'm applying that bulk of that product and feathering it up. It's so simple. And um, I'm curing. Um, I'm, this color, it doesn't move much. So I'm probably doing two nails and curing and moving to the, to the other hand. Um, you can do one finger at a time. You just want to make sure that your gel is not leaning over and moving too much. And if you're starting to hit it, maybe you want to cure it. So I usually go back and forth, left hand, do a nail, put in the light, right hand, do a nail, and keep so forth and so on. So next I'm using the cool gel to encapsulate. And um, this is another reason we want to put that tack. You want to make sure you put it from the cuticle area all the way to the free edge because now this cool gel um, needs to adhere from the cuticle area down and you can see i'm applying a slip layer and this helps our builder gel know where to go it's saying hey this is where you need to be and i'm getting a bigger bead and i'm manipulating it down the nail as you can see and i'm floating it where it needs to go builder gel is so easy gravity does the work you can see i'm just throwing a string in there and it's just leveling beautifully now if you're new to gel and you want to dip your foot into it i definitely recommend a set like this this is going to get you into gel because the clarity of clear there's no acrylic there's no acrylic i'll, I'll emphasize that matches the clarity of gel of a regular clear gel it's just not there's some very good clear acrylics but none match gel it's it's glass basically <laughs> that's what it is it's so clear so if you want to get the most out of your glitter acrylics, encapsulate it in a clear gel. Use that light elegance tack, apply it on top of your glitter and encapsulate it in a clear gel. I recommend light elegance cool gel like I showed you or their extreme gel in clear. Write that down. One of those two, even IBD, that's a different brand, IBD gel in their clear that's great also good quality very strong so try it out play with it i'm telling you there's not a clear that can match it dip your toe into builder gel if you're not used to it try it by doing like i said a set like this or just encapsulating your full glitter nails in clear acrylic so after i do all that i cure now when i'm doing that let me add while you watch me file with this cross cut bit which i love um, I do that encapsulating with that clear gel one nail at a time because it can move too much. So I do one finger on one hand, put in the light, take the other hand. So I don't do two or three nails at a time when I'm encapsulating with that clear gel and just do one nail at a time and alternate between hands. So back to me using this cross cut bit when you're filing gel, it's so easy to file. I wouldn't use a bit with teeth. This bit is the equivalent to a sanding band so i just go over quickly it's so easy to file it's so quick just you just have to experience it so just the cross cut bit and that's it we're ready to go i'm dusting that dust out the cuticle area and i'm going in with my young nails protein bond y'all know i like to use this this keeps my top coat from pulling away from the cuticle area or from having any separation but it also helps fill in any of that texture that we imparted when we used um, the cross cut bit, any of those little scrapes um, from that filing, that texture, it kind of fills it in. So we have even more clarity when we top coat. And it just it helps ensure that it doesn't chip. I've never had an issue with top coat chipping, but I mean, if you ever have, or just a colored gel or anything, protein bond is there to save the day <laughs> so i'm just top coating with poochie's nails top coat that's the one i decided to use that day it's a very good top coat i have so many i'm not married to just one i'm just i'm married to good top coats so i go back and forth with a lot of different ones so once we top coat that's it we're done it's so so simple and this is our hybrid set these are the steps you need to take in the products to use specifically that light elegance tack that's your key 
that's your key right there use that light elegance tack on top of the acrylic before you apply your builder gel that's that's your plus sign that's what's making it work bringing it together that light elegance tack is a must when you're doing hybrid sets like this so definitely a purchase and please play around you guys please try this i want you guys to experience gel i love it so much i want you to love it too but anyways i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe comment and leave a green heart emoji let's see how that goes all right you guys bye